Our next presentation is the Data Concepts and Project Management Committee alignment that will be presented by Pierre Godin and Chad Leong. Pierre, Chad? All right, um, good morning everyone, good afternoon. So um, when we talk about alignment, we often think about um, alignment in technology, alignment in um, architecture, alignment in Go. But to me, um, one of the important things that we often overlook is actually um, alignment on people. Um, and to, to illustrate what I mean by that, um, oh yeah, right here. Yeah, to illustrate what I mean by that, um, I would like to show you here is a map of actually where uh, all the different teams of OSDU is located at. And as you can see, right now we are close to around 15 countries around the world. So when we are working globally with a team that is spread across the different geography, um, it's important for us to know and be um, aware of some of the differences in terms of the, um, the working timeline and the, the different um, cultures as well, of course, what I mean by that. So um, one of the things that I wanted to mention here is that, um, just to want to take for example, um, so um, recently we, we have a, an issue that we discovered in um, Reservoir DMS, as uh, um, Philip was mentioning about the, the manifest generation. So what happened was, um, I would like to just give an example. So um, Alice um, actually reached out to me, and Alice, she's located in Paris, in France, and I'm located in, um, of course, uh, Norway, in Stavanger. So, so now we are talking to both of the team in both Norway and Paris. So what happens next is that um, we will check with um, Thomas from Norway as well, and then we would have to coordinate with the buses from, um, and he's actually located in Chicago. And we work out all the resourcing gaps that we have today um, in, in OSDU. And finally, we reach out to um, our ingestion team, uh, which is uh, Yan from EPAM. And he's located in uh, ba Belarus in Minsk right there. So, and, and finally, he, we managed to get a, a fix out for the issues that he was facing. And then um, we pass the feedback back to Lahon, and he's actually located in Houston. So what I'm trying to show is that um, in just a short span of time, um, we have four different companies, five different cities, and six um, people that are sort of working together to solve or resolve on this problem right now that we're facing. So I just wanted to show you truly how global it is um, OSDU and for us to be aware of the different um, things that they're working on uh, in these aspects. Um, which sort of brings me to my next point, uh, which is alignment on um, expectation. So we talk about alignment of people, and the next thing is, of course, the alignment of expectation. Um, there are right now two different nature of contribution, if you will, and one is on the fresh development, um, so when we, whenever we kickstart a project in OSDU, um, it's mainly funded by the contributing companies. So I'm just going to show some examples, um, like the policy service, um, some of the groundwork that's been done was donated, and then we have the GCZ, um, David was describing that, and of course um, some of the utilities that were donated by the uh, members of the forum, and right now we have the, the up and coming um, rock and fluid sample DDMS. So, of course, there's always the pros and cons to each of these projects and the nature of it. And, um, it, of course, like, for example, it would have a longer development time aligning with different community. Um, so it's really um, a different process the, the way that you're looking at it. And if you compare that to the um, existing code donation that we have, like a lot of the um, core services that we have today, we're actually sort of developed pre-R3, so things are slightly more on the stable end. Um, they're, they're being developed and accepted um, through adoption and governance. And the, the pros and cons behind it is, of course, we do have a shorter development cycle uh, because we sort of t tested it um, before releasing it to the public. And, and right now, um, there's always the, the, the downside of it, which we have to look into sort of integrating with the different data models that have been out there 
and sort of reworking with, um, of course, uh, Pierre Rick on, and on the work that has been done on the data definition side. Um, and this is just a quick slide to sort of show, um, and I'm just using DDM as an example. Of course, we have the work on the consumption zones um, and the different part of the uh, services that we have in OSDU. Um, so this is just sort of going through um, the different expectation of people in terms of where we are in the development on the Wellboy DDMS, um, the Well Delivery DDMS, Seismic DDMS, so things that have been developed and been around for some time. So, um, of, of course, they move at a slightly different velocity. Things are a bit progressing, but uh, much slower because we wanted to make sure that we have, we are seeing the adoption right there. And then you have Reservoir DDMS, which we just released um, a couple milestones ago. And right now, we are working on um, adopting, um, adoption by more CSP integration, um, as well as uh, integrating with the core part of the OSDU platform. And of course, we also have uh, production DDMS, sort of um, pretty new um, in the scene. Um, that, that is, of course, happening behind the scene as well. And we also have the rock and fluid sample DDMS, which is just um, announced last week. And um, the teams are right now working on the different parts of the integration. So um, a lot of you have been asking, so what, what do the PMC really do? So um, we do have uh, several levels of governance within the PMC. So one is, of course, to ensure that uh, the project itself, uh, and if you know, um, in the open source community, we do have the owner of the project itself. And we have to ensure the maintainers have, do have the correct access to the project. Um, provisioning the right privileges to the developers so that they can submit code changes and code reviews and all that process. And we do have a published sets of uh, best practices for PMC. Um, for example, we do want to make sure that they're all following the correct um, project structure, um, the milestone cadence. So as uh, Steve was mentioning this morning, um, right now we are on the uh, M16 release and right now we are actively testing M17. So part of the role is to ensure that um, this yet progresses and doesn't sort of stall at any end. And of course, looking at the merge requests um, and of course, uh, breaking changes, uh, we do have to go through the review from the E8, um, the advice forum, to make sure that um, everyone is relying on the changes. Um, in Forsec, we do look at uh, security vulnerabilities to making sure that it gets fixed before uh, it gets exposed to the public. And last but not least, uh, which we do also look at the data concepts alignment, uh, which um, Pierre Rick right here will share a bit more about um, how we do it um, through the data concepts integration. Thank you, Chad. Okay, so I'll come back to the example of the RDDMS. I won't cover the overall uh, life cycle that Philippe uh, already did very well, but just to show how the RDDMS is the perfect example of how the PMC data definition and EA, uh, um, let's say, transverse um, and coordination ad self-adopted the uh, operating model that has been presented uh, by the panel session. So on this story, you can divide the uh, RDDMS lifecycle, let's say, in three uh, different main phases. The first one, which was, let's say, the inceptions, conceptual definitions, uh, it started mainly based on the energistics integration where we decided to adopt the rescue ML model. At this stage, we had a couple of uh, requirements to deep dive into both the data definition itself, how to accommodate the uh, rescue ML model within the pre-existing concepts, principles of the uh, data definition uh, in OSDU, and on the enterprise architecture part, what are the main services the RDDMS should uh, deserve. At this stage, the, uh, let's say, activity of the development and of the PMC was quite poor, and progressively, we moved to the uh, second phase, which was the, uh, let's say, the core development of the RDDMS. At this stage, uh, the main development have been preceded by, by, uh, by Aspentech, as uh, Philippe said, but it has been encapsulated or embedded within the, um, within the PMC. So at this stage, this is where the PMC uh, efforts became the, the biggest one. We still had those two teams for data definition and enterprise architecture, and nowadays we are more in a kind of, let's say, CI-CD, um, uh, let's say, a basis, so just updating the RDDMS based on new requirements, but minor ones. So as Philip said also, we merged the EA team and the data definition team. We are just 
proceeding with the continuous uh, additions of uh, requirements, and we are fully aligned and fully embedded within the project team. So we still have the calls dedicated to the specifications, but the teams are the same within the specification, EANDD, and the PMC. We can consider in the future having some key uh, game changers, technical business, that would require us to come back to phase one or phase two to make big updates on the RDDMS, we don't know. So we need to be, the, the key outcomes from this presentation is that on, in terms of organization, you need to make sure that you have the right contributors at the right, ta at the right time, which means that you need to be flexible on the organizations and to do so, to adapt your organization to the uh, different requirements and different maturity level you are in your projects, the communication is a key. So definitely, we kept discussing together with Chad, but this is something we need to formalize and to emphasize and we need to keep for the future. So definitely, the operating model that has been presented is exactly what we need this kind of, let's say, adaptative organizations, and to, to, to succeed, we need to, uh, we need to communicate, 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 communicate. Uh, and that pass through a couple of uh, calls. Uh, maybe I won't pass all over, but you have plenty of uh, weekly meetings and, and uh, bi-weekly meetings, but that's it. So yeah. this is the, the key things we wanted to share with, uh, with Chad today, so thank you very much. Thank you.